Good evening, Dr. Morris. How are you on today? This evening, may I say? I am good. How are you doing? I'm doing well, trying to um, trying to make it and thanking God for life and health and, uh, you know, strength and all of those things. You know what I'm saying? What, what about you? Look, I always got to be thankful for all those particular things and, you know, just... Right about now, just glad, you know, that I'm still among the land of the living and I am still pressing on. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. It's um life. Life is very, very challenging, Um, you know, on, um, you know, several fronts. And um, man, I, I just, you know, we got on here tonight um, just just to have, um, you know, a crucial conversation, um, you know, and I'm praying that and it will help somebody just kind of understand, um, you know, just understand life in general. You know, we seem to be going through a lot. Um, so, so many challenges inside this world on today. Um, mm -hmm. Amen. Glad to have a few people on um, already. Um, of course, um, always uh, Sister Isabel, she says, good evening. Always, always happy to have her on here. Amen. 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 Yeah. Always happy to have her on. And um, man, God is God is just good. And, um, yes, he is. <laughs> I mean, what do you, yeah, I mean, Dr. Moore, what do you have on that? I'm just excited. What do you have just about, it's about God is good. You know, do, do you wake up in the morning and just really be like, man, with everything going on in the world, I just got to throw up my hand sometimes and just say God is good? I mean, most definitely, you know, um, a lot of times life is very challenging, you know, but at the end of the day, you know, that, you know, as all we always say that he's just a covenant keeping God, you know, so wow. when we just kind of wake up, you know, and get in, you know, and just remember, you know, what his word has said, you know, and the fact that he would never leave us, not forsake us, then it doesn't matter how difficult, you know, it may get. You know, mm -hmm. we are, you know, we still have an opportunity, you know, to just give him, you know, all the praise and the glory just for being wow. able to press our way through. Wow. Wow. Well, let's go ahead like, and jump right in. Again, I'm Pastor Lambert. This is Dr. Carla Morris. Um, you know, we just come to chat. Um, tonight, um, we're having, you know, a conversation and, you know, we want you all to share with people. We're not going to be on here long tonight. Um, general, general conversation. Of course, we want you all we want you all to be able to comment inside of like the comment section. Um, I see some people going on. Um, Lady Hatfield, uh, Sister April Smith Hatfield, God bless you, woman of God. Um, Lady Neil, we're glad to have you on. You all share this. Amen. Pastor Tom W. W. Scott. Amen. Mm -hmm. Arkadelphia. Amen. Amen. Pastor, <laughs> we're always, always honored to see you. So we're just going to jump into this. Amen. God is good. Um, God is good. Y'all going to hear me say that a, a whole lot tonight <laughs> because I have so much um, to yeah. just, you know, to just say that, you know, just say it about. I say it inside of my private time and I don't have a problem saying it publicly. Amen. You know, God Amen. is good. We serve an amazing God. So yes. let's let's jump into this. And so this is where we're headed, uh, Dr. Morris. Why? Why has life become so difficult so 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 challenging not not um and i'm talking about even for the believers um um life is just really really like difficult and i'm going to go down as a matter of fact i'll just name some things and you know i'll let you um uh you know just kind of comment on like some of these things life struggles you know we have uh the uh we're living in a bad economy you know financial distress um um let's start there you know finances you know and the whole you know economics um a lot of people are you know walking around and they love god um they go to church um but but they're depressed they're saying you know i'm doing everything that i know to do but it seems like i still can't get ahead can you can you speak on that Look, it just seems like, you know, it's, it's just a constant rat race, you know, like mm. you said, you know, it, um, I think that phrase that we use all the time, where we say that if it ain't one thing, you know, it's another, you know, wow. that, you know, so many challenges just keep coming, you know, you know, I mean, you've already named, you know, several of them, you know, but it just goes back to, you know, when we get to each one of those and when they start compounding, 
you know, then yes. it just really begins, you know, to just be an issue, you know, health issues, financial issues, relationship issues, you know, work yes. issues, children issues, family issues, you know, it's just get to be overwhelming. You know, I think and then with, you know, the pandemic that came and, you know, dealing with COVID and, you know, and, you know, and a lot of the things that one would have thought they would have had control of before, you know, and they found that, you know, that they really didn't have control over things that they depended on before that was their comforts and their, you know, their little blankets that they could kind of hold on to, you know, those things being pulled off and up under them. And, you know, I think it just left individuals in a state, you know, of, you know, just feeling like life is just, uh, you know, um, hurling out of control, whirling yeah. out of control. And so, you know, so it just seemed like, you know, you on this, um, continual roller coaster ride, you know, and it's like, you know, not just being not being able, you know, to get a grip, you know, on what's going on. And, you know, and if we're not careful, you know, like you said, you know, we get to a point where, you know, that we kind of lose focus of what's real, what's not real, what we can rely on, what we can't rely on, who we can rely on, who we can't rely on, you know, it's just, it's just so many uncertainties in every Amen. area. Right, right. So, so, um, yes to everything, um, that, that, um, that you're saying, I totally, totally like agree with it all. Listen, um, one thing like that I've noticed um, with you know people dealing with um, a lot, a lot of things in their life um, is that you know sometimes people are dealing with um, the need to be or the need to become. Right? They, they're they're not they're not satisfied, you know, like with who they are. You know, right. it's like you know right. I'm trying to be something. Um, I don't, I don't know who I am, right? I haven't, I haven't discovered, you know, my own purpose. There was a, there was an old saying back in the day. I don't, I don't know who said it, but they said, if you don't stand for something, you'll fall for anything, right? right? right. If, you, if you, if you don't have a purpose, if you don't, if you don't have any goals, if you, if you, if you don't have any standards, you leave yourself vulnerable, Right. right to to just attach yourself to you know anything and then here it is you'll attach yourself to anybody Amen. so so with saying that i want to i want to talk about uh i want to talk about the social media influence right <laughs> um, a lot of times people um they're beginning to find you know their um identity mm. within social media it's like um they begin to feel, uh, you know, they begin to feel like valuable, um, important, um, based off of likes, right? They might right. not even know people, but they're saying, listen, if I can get enough likes, um, that void is being filled. I feel like I'm somebody, you know, I feel like I'm somebody and they become, you know, Facebook addicts and, you know, they be, uh, you know, they live their life you know, on uh, like TikTok and, you know, like Twitter. It's nothing wrong with those like platforms. You know, I go right. on all of those platforms, but they haven't engulfed me to the point to where I live for them. Right. What would you have to say, you know, to people who have just um, social media is, is it's not fun for them. It's, it's actually something that they need so that they feel valuable inside this broken world i mean it's just like you know they're just connected to it you know and like you said you know without it they still feel like they're no one without it you know they feel like you know that no one is acknowledging them you know no one right. understands them and so you know so you know they they just get attached to it you know and so it becomes you know kind of like um an addiction you know, mm -hmm. that they begin to have, you know, just craving, you know, that attention, you know, and I think that what has happened is the same, you know, um, you know, addiction drive, you know, to be accepted, you know, that we, you know, that we experience like in our, you know, in our social settings, just, you know, um, you know, in person, you know, or whatever you think about high school, you know, you think about college and you just want to be in the group that accepts you, the group that likes you. But then a lot of times mm -hmm. individuals find themselves in groups that, you know, that they don't even like the people that they hanging out with. They, they just like the fun time. Their appearance of the fun time that they're having or they feel like they're wow. connecting with people that's important, you know, so even in social media, you know, on Facebook, TikTok, you know, Twitter, all those things, you know, the more likes and if they can connect with somebody that get a lot of likes that they feel like, you know, that they 
that person, you know, helps them to be an influential, you know, person. If they can get them to like their one their page one time, get them to give a comment, you know. And but the sad part about it is the same effect that it had, you know, um, prior to, you know, um, um, you know, the social media going viral, you know, where individuals will begin to be depressed because they're still empty. They would begin to be depressed, you know, because, you know, they they still, you know, don't they don't really have a real relationship, you know, with the people that they hang it out with. And in, in, on social media, you really don't have a real relationship. If you go and you look at your list, the majority of the people that's on there are not even people that, you know, not even people that's in wow. your same state, not no people that you would probably never meet and never touch, you know, but but individuals become dependent, you know, upon, you know, on on those likes, you know, or whatever. And so, you know, you have people that they, they begin to be shut down, you know, when they, you know, when they can't compete with the likes, when they can't get the likes, you know, from people that they think are influential people, you know, in the social media, you know, environment, you know, or whatever. And so we just begin to have that same domino effect, you know, on them, right, you know, right. and on their, um, you know, their self-worth, you know, and all of that. So, 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 so like with that being said, um, and I'm talking, so there, there are people, right, um, who are just good people, right? They they go to church, they actually love God, right? And right. and 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 so it's nothing, nothing like um, it's nothing like derogatory to say from that aspect. But they find themselves high on Sunday, right? But then Monday through like Saturday, it's like they have no they have no purpose. You know, I've been. I've been talking to some people that say, listen, you know, I don't I don't have no friends and, and you know, I don't I don't want to deal with nobody. You know, I go to church. That's where I get my high at. And and then I go home and be to myself. And it floored me. Right. Because I'm thinking you're a believer. Like your job is to go like and spread the gospel. How why are you just keeping that to yourself? You know, you you should be out spreading the word and and. But they don't have an identity. Isabel puts on here, which is which is a good question. She says, does church mean that you're good? No, church doesn't mean that somebody is, you know, like good. But I would say this, that they inside the right place. Right. Um, 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 the old the old preachers would say, if the devil's in church, you, 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 you know, you got one of two options, either get saved. Or, or you're gonna have to get out of here because we're gonna call them the name of Jesus. That was just a that was just a side note. But let me let me kind of stay, you know, focused on um this this low self-esteem. I think there's a lot of people um who have low self-esteem and they you know it's it's been covered up with you know positions. Um, inside the secular world, um, not not like just in church, and and um, what would you tell those people? It's like I know where we're headed. We want we want for people to get to know themselves, to get to know God. That's right. that's where we're right. headed. But there is some conversation before we get to that point, right? Because some people have lived um, a pseudo a false life for so long. They have gotten a false life mixed up with a real life, and they right. and so they no longer know the difference. What would you um? What kind of input would you have on that, or what kind of you know encouragement would you have? You know, if you have people on here to come on here later, and they have friends, we know we're gonna get to God because we're gonna get to that on the end. But what would you say to them? I mean, basically, we have to get to a point where our focus is not so much on ourselves. You know, mm. a lot of times, you know, um, when you're dwelling within a false sense of, you know, self-worth and different things like that, it's because, you know, you're just focusing so much on yourself, you know, and so you have to get to a point, you know, where you start, you know, changing that. The other thing is, you know, that, you know, we have to get to a point, you know, um, where, you know, you don't feel that you have to live a hypocritical life, that you don't have mm. to try to be, you know, something specific, you know, to someone when you know that's not even who you are, you know, you're striving, wow. you know, to live up to somebody else's perspective, you know, of you and or sometimes it's your own perspective because it's what you've been told, you know, or who you've been told, you know, you should be. And you don't even have a desire to be that person, you know, or whatever. And you're miserable, you know, because, you know, you're trying to, you know, um, you know, be something, you know, that you're not. Um, 
And then the other thing is, you know, sometimes, you know, we just get to that thing, you know, to that point where we have to realize that, um, you know, that you can't just be who you want to and do what you want to do. You know, we have to think about, you know, how that's going to have an effect, you know, on right. other individuals. You know, a lot of times, you know, we find ourselves rejected. We, talk, we find ourselves, you know, not accepted, things like that, because we are trying to force, you know, a persona of who we want to be on someone. But those in particular individuals don't even see us, you know, as that particular, you know, um, type of person yeah. or person, you know, or whatever. And mm -hmm. then the other thing, is you know that a lot of times you know that we fail to even take responsibility whether take responsibility for who we are whether take responsibility for our own happiness you know our own you know um um, um you know um acceptance you know of ourselves a lot of times we're striving so hard for somebody else to accept us and we haven't even accepted ourselves you know yeah. so the, you know so it goes back to again you know start creating you know this falsehood you know um in our minds and sometimes you know in the minds of others and you know and then we get to a point you know to want to try to talk about you know how bad other people are and how off their perspective is and all these type of things when we just need to be just honest with ourselves you know that you know you we're living a lot and if we ever get to yeah. that point and we start really living you know um who we are you know living and being you know okay you know with um you know with with, with the person that we have been called to be the person to do the things that we are passionate about you know live where you know we are we are happy living and so when we get to what we stop trying to impress people people that are not even impressed, you know, by anything that we're doing, you know, anyway. Wow. Yeah, well, um, yes, to 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 um, what you're saying, I totally agree with that. But you know what, let me let me let me ask this question. Um, and, and so I asked this question with um, all, you know, sincerity. Um, just want to and let me let me just thank, you know, the people that are on here, um, you know, for being on um, Glenn Bryant, Deacon Glenn Bryant. Thank you man for you know signing in of course we acknowledge pastor tom scott amen i can only see you all if you leave a comment um melissa amen my this is this is my cousin she's up in illinois amen she says gotta stop letting the perception of others dictate how we see ourselves and which is which is just an amazing like perspective um thank you melissa that's that's my cousin amazing amazing singer Amen. Amen. You all have got to go to her page. She's on here. Go to her page. Amen. Befriend her. Listen, um, this is valid. And, and this is something uh, that I was talking to um, a dear, a dear friend of mine about today. Um, have we lost the sense of community? Right. What what I know as being a community, you know, 40 years ago, that community today doesn't exist, right? right? I went, I went to preschool. I went to first grade, second grade, third grade, fourth. Fifth. I, I went with the same people, right? We knew everybody inside the neighborhood, right? And so we had this. We all, we all went to church together. Amen. It was times like that, you know. Like my mom would walk us to church, right? And 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 so so, this sense of community has been like replaced with. Now you have people's like community. It's only on social media, right? Um, I think it's my generation, right? I'm 52. I think it's my generation that kind of messed it up because when I came up, right, we lived in one neighborhood all of our lives, right? I think it was my generation, you know, because like my children, I lived here. I went to Colorado. You know, I went to Fort Knox, Kentucky, you know, I was moving around and they never really had a group of people that or a neighborhood where the community can get involved. They're like community is on like social media. It's like a lot of the kids now. Everybody want to be a gamer. Right. What, what is that for? For not, uh, I, you know, I can't think of the game, but it's like everybody's on that game. My, my grandson, he's on there with like people that he don't really know, but they but that's their community. And so the reason that's important, that becomes their influence, right? And so what's the difference of the communities then, which was real people, you couldn't do nothing, or you know, Sister Jenkins was gonna whoop you and send you home back to your mother. You had to be in the house before like the street lights came on. What's the difference in that community and having those influences? And today, a lot of people, a lot of the young adults, 
you know, a lot of the children who who are being shaped on like how to think, their influence is a bunch of strangers, but it's addictive to be on social media. Mm -hmm. Well, look, I guess I can kind of relate to what you said. You know, I grew up by the village. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I mean, I had the stability. Um, we didn't move around, you know, a whole lot. It actually we didn't move around, you know, at all. I didn't move around. I didn't move away until, you know, I got to my um, young adulthood or whatever, wow. you know, and so, you know, and still, you know, that's what's um, actually ingrained in me, you know, mm -hmm. um, you know, so, um, you know, so, I mean, I, so I don't really know what it's like, you know, to desire, you know, the, the likes, I mean, the, the affection or the, you know, for, you know, strangers, you know, to like me because mm -hmm. I'm just so used to community, <laughs> you know, or whatever, wow. you know, um, you know, but I think that there's a, the big difference is that for me, you know, what I call the village, what I, what I call the community is that, you know, you were surrounded by, you know, um, you know, everybody genuinely cared. Everybody knew, you know, that, you, you know, you, I mean, it wasn't like you were saying that this person can't discipline your child. You know, I couldn't say anything mm -hmm. to you. Everybody, you know, that was an adult, you know, had the right, you know, to discipline somebody's mm -hmm. child, you wow. know, and to and to speak into their life, you know, and they, I mean, and, and, you know, they grew up, you know, in church together. They went to school together, you know, everybody just knew each other, you know. And so, you know, so now, you know, being on social media, you know, you're, they're befriending individuals that they really don't know. The only thing, when you, like you mentioned, the gaming system, the only thing that they have in common, you know, is the game system, you know, or whatever. Wow. If you remove that game system, you know, they really do not know each other. They have no personal relationship. They have no real concern. You know, if they lose um, the friend that they was playing with last week, they not messed up, but they just go find another friend. I mean, there wow. is no type of um, connection, you know, or what I would call a real authentic relationship. And I think, unfortunately, that's what a lot of individuals miss out on today because they really don't know what it's like to be liked. They don't know what it's like to be loved. They don't know what it's like to have people to really care about them. You know, yeah. um, they they swap, you know, friendships or what they call a friendship on social media, just like you would swap a car. You get tired of it, you know, and you just go get a new one. And, you know, mm -hmm. and no harm, no file. And so, you know, so I think that, you know, that's the biggest difference is because of the lack of, you know, relationship, which means that there is no accountability. You know what I'm saying? Because, no. again, I can just go get a new one. You know, I can get a new friend. I can go and delete, you know, 200 Facebook um, friends off of my page. And at the end of the day, you can end up with another whole 200, you know, in less than five minutes. You know, right. all you do is say the right thing, be in the right place, you know or whatever the case may be, but again, they still, they don't really know me. They're judging wow. me off what I post. They might judge me off of, you know, um, I'm different things, but the bottom line is they don't know me and they don't have a real connection with me in most cases. Well, and you know, and, and, you know, I would, I would add to that. Yeah. They, they, they don't know you. I think one of the bigger problems is a lot of times we, we don't know ourselves. Mm -hmm. We're, 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 you know, it's one thing to fool somebody else. Right. It's another whole world when you're fooling yourself. Right. Shavonda, Shavonda Renee Nelson. God bless you. She says personal accountability, correction, hands on like teaching, love, soul food, genuine, genuine friendship. Um, um, yes. And I certainly agree with with all those things. But it's not a but to that. Um, separate comment. Let me let me just say that. How do you how do you do those things when you're not even friends with yourself? Right. People are walking around like like I don't even like me. That's what people are saying. Um, um, I'm getting all of this. I'm getting all this teaching, all of this encouragement. And and I've lived so long with like pointing the fingers at everybody else. And I never took time to, you know, have any self accountability of me. I'm trying to get my neighbor right. You know, we, you know, if y'all, if y'all, if y'all part of church, y'all done heard, you know, touch your neighbor, right? <laughs> Everybody turn to their neighbor, right? I've been turning to my neighbor and I've been giving my neighbor so many things to where my neighbor is in a good space and right. I'm still in a right. jacked up place. 
that I've been because I've never used what I've got for myself. It's always been for my neighbor. All of my neighbors are living great. All of my neighbors have, uh, they have this peace of mind because I've been giving out things. I've just been regurgitating, but I've never looked in the mirror. This is somebody's testimony. I've never looked in the mirror and really looked at myself and said, how can I be better? How can I live better? How can I have a peace of mind? Um, what would you say to that, Dr. Morris, about like people who have become so comfortable with, you know, like critiquing others until they forgot to, cr to critique themselves? Well, they have a difficult time doing that because, I mean, it goes back to what you said earlier. I mean, they really don't know themselves. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, you know, we have to get to a point or they have to get to a point, you know, where they spend time, you know, finding out who they really are. You How do know, they do um, that? How do I they mean, do that? Well, I mean, that's just going to be an assessment of, you know, mm -hmm. just, just beginning to really look in the mirror. You know, and like you said, you know, I mean, look in the mirror. Why do you not like what you see? You know, why are you striving so hard, you know, to become something, you know, that you're not? You know what I'm saying? You know, mm -hmm. um, number one, you know, when you look in the mirror, you know, are you really you? You know, it, I mean, a lot of times, you know, we, we we start putting on, you know, so many different things, you know, and and, um, you know, dressing, you know, according to the trends and doing whatever, you know, but it, we, I mean, a per they take a look in the mirror and they don't even see them, you know, and, and is I think I heard a phrase one time, you know, when somebody said, you know, I looked in the mirror and, you know, and, and, and I didn't even know who I was looking at anymore. You know what wow. I'm saying? I, I've changed, wow. you know, so much, you know, and, and I, and I don't even know where I lost myself at, you know, but somewhere along the way, you know, that I just stopped being me. And so, you know, so you have to get to that point where, you know, you start doing those self-assessments, get to that point, you know, where, you know, you really start drilling down, you know, and start asking yourself, you know, who am I and how did I become who I am today and who is it that I really want to be? You know, wow. and so in doing that, I mean, it's just a series of things that one just have to start going through the same assessment and process that they use to critique and judge other individuals, the same one that they got to use and judge them. You know, um, why do I go where I go? Why do I hang out, you know, with the individual that I hang out with? You know, what do we have in common? So I answer that, what do I like? You know, who do I really want to hang out with? You know, who adds value to my life and what value do I have, you know, to ask, you know, to add to someone else's life? You know, what is my life pursuit? You know, what is my purpose? You know, I mean, there are just so many different assessment questions that one has to ask themselves, but then they have to start being real, you know, with themselves, being authentic with themselves, holding themselves accountable to um, where they're trying to go and not where other individuals are actually leading them and or where wow. they're leading themselves because they want to be in under what they perceive to be the in crowd. Yeah, um, I think I think somebody that that does not know how to be accountable to, you know, to themselves. Um, I think that's the reason that we have to have community. Right. Mm -hmm. You 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 need people around you. Sometimes you can't you can't see it like you're living inside dysfunction. So you become dysfunction and dysfunction becomes right for the person. Right. They're saying this is normal. You know, what happens when dysfunction is normal? Mm -hmm. Right. You, 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 you can't. It's hard to reach a person like that, which is why we need to surround ourselves with believers. Right. Because we are Bible based on this platform. Right. And, and so you have to surround yourselves with with, you know, other believers. And then you need a standard. Right. If if. If my standard alone has me living inside dysfunction, I need another standard. And then please don't let me acknowledge that I'm a believer, because if I'm a believer, there is a standard. It's called the Bible. It's, it, it's it, you know, it gives me like a blueprint on, you know, how to treat myself. It gives me the blueprint, you know, on like how to treat other people. The Bible is like the blueprint. So that is the standard for like believers. It, 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 it. It's a it's a book of self-awareness. It's it's a book that makes us be better, makes us do better, because if you if you don't have a standard, if you're your own standard, you can only live to the level of you. And if the top of your level is dysfunction, guess what you're going to be? You're going to be dysfunctional. 
You got that's so true. Go ahead, Dr. Morris. No, I'm going to say that's true. You know, and then I guess, you know, we always go back to this whole thing about love and we mm -hmm. forget that the command was to love others, you know, as you love yourself. And so wow. the problem is that, you know, we don't know we don't love ourselves and we don't know how to love ourselves. And so when we when we walk around and we just talk about love all the time, you know, and it's like, you know, that's like asking somebody to do something, you know, that they have no reference point for. You know, mm. so we wonder why we mistreat each other, you know, when we do all that, because the bottom line is that we're treating other individuals how we feel like we're supposed to be treated. You know what I'm saying? Wow. We're treating other individuals according, other individuals according to our perspective of ourselves. Now, we don't like to talk about that. But at the end of the day, in most cases, you can only give what you got. Right. Wow. And so, you know, so if you don't have love on the inside of you, if you don't have self-love, then there's no way you're going to be able to love somebody else if you don't know wow. who you are then there's really no way that you could identify you know who somebody else is you know if you're always judgmental with yourself then you're going to always be judgmental with somebody else so i think a lot of times you know what we fail to realize is that a lot of times how we handle other individuals goes back you know to that scripture where it says love others where you know as you love yourself we're treating them according to the way that we treat ourselves not that we say treat others the way you want to be treated but if you can't do that because you can again only give what you got so wow. if you don't like yourself you ain't gonna like nobody else right if you never wow. have anything good to say about yourself you're never gonna have anything good to say about somebody else you don't have um, self-confidence and yourself that you can do the seemingly impossible then you know what you're not gonna believe that anybody else can do it you know we're always projecting our own self you know thoughts you know onto other individuals and trying to hold them according to our standard and look our standard are low is low because we don't know ourselves okay so 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 I think I think that we have identified um, a, a lot of the reasons you know uh, no self-awareness um, dysfunctional um, dysfunctional thinking, dysfunctional behavior, low self-esteem, right? Um, no, no real sense, um, you know, no real sense of like community, right? It's gone, right? Um, you know, who's influencing the next generation? Seems like, you know, like social media, gaming, it's like, those are like the influences. So, um, we've identified those things. So now it's how do we fix ourselves? Um, you know, how do we begin to take back um, the things that have gotten us so off course? Now, one of the things is that um, we have to get closer to God. Right. Um, and and. You know, we have to pray to God, you know, like for wisdom. How do we, you know, God, how do I move? You know, how do, when do I respond? When do I do this? When do I do that? But even to get there, we have to be okay, right? With taking advice that we validate, that we do authenticate. We have to be okay with taking advice from other people. And we, we got to, we got to pull our guard down. Let me tell you one thing I did, Dr. Morris, and then I'll let you get in on this. I went to somebody, I went to this brother and we had a conversation. And so I literally had to tell him, I said, Hey man, listen, I, I want for you to be able to hold me accountable. He says, Oh, okay, cool, cool. I said, no, no, no. I said, listen, I said, I'm giving you permission right? Because most people don't feel like comfortable with telling somebody else, hey, bro, you was wrong. Hey, sis, you shouldn't have did that. We like literally have to find some people that we trust. And, you know, hopefully it's people that also trust God. And we need accountability partners, but we got to be okay with having those. Because I'm going to tell you the truth. A lot of times, especially with us, Y'all know what I mean with us? Can't nobody tell us nothing. It's either our way or the highway. That's in our house and in the other houses too. I don't want to get on that, but y'all know what I'm talking about. Can't nobody tell nobody nothing. So Dr. Morris, what's, 
what's the importance of you know surrounding yourselves, giving giving other people the um, giving them uh, like the latitude to be able to deal with us inside of a real way? I mean, I think that just goes back to that support system. You know, it goes back to that community. You know, it goes back, you know, to that village, you know, and everyone mm-hmm. needs that, you know. And but like you said, everyone has to identify that, you know, uh, um, you know, and get to a point where we stop letting in and everybody into our life and taking advice from any wow. everybody. But like you said, it has to be those trusted, you know, advisors, you know, those that have your best interests in mind, you know, those that are striving, you know, like you said, to live upright, you know, um, according to the word of God. God and in the sight, you know, of God, you know, and so, you know, so we have to stop migrating, you know, to individuals that do not meet those particular standards, you know, or whatever, you know, we have to, you know, you know, get to a point, you know, where individuals, you know, let us, okay, let us know that, you know, it's okay to change, you know, just because, you know, you've done something a certain way, you know, all of your life, no matter how old you may be, or how young you may be, the bottom line is, you know, there's a better way, you know, of doing things. And when we get in and we start studying the word of God, then we begin to understand that, you know, I don't have a standard, you know, you don't have a standard, other folks don't Mm -hmm. have a standard, you know, that it has to be according, you know, to, you know, to God's standard, you know, we have to stop giving in, you know, um, you know, with individuals that giving us advice, you know, that we know don't line up, you know, when they're trying to be that crab in the bucket, you know, pulling you back, you know, to that place of dysfunction. And we have to start migrating, you know, to those individuals that are trying to show you, you know, how to get out of the situation you are, how to get out of the circumstances you are, trying to get you to a place, you know, where you start believing in yourself, that you start seeing yourself, that you start recognizing the gifts, the abilities, the talents, you know, the strengths that are on the side, on the inside of you, and you start using those things to pull you out of that place. And, you know, only someone that really has your um, best interests in mind, only someone that really can love you because they love themselves, they're not telling you anything, that they're not practicing themselves, they don't sit and try to tell you that they're perfect you know they don't sit and try to pass judgment on you a lot of times they give you advice you know from their own personal experiences and I saw somebody put in there earlier, you know, where it relates to, you know, um, um, you know, you have to look for those titles, you know, um, um, to men and women of God. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You know, those that are following that pattern, that standard, you know, that has been sitting there is going to teach you, you know, what is good, going to teach you, you know, how to live, going to let you know that it's not the adornment, you know, on the outside, you know, that make you, you know, but it's the it's what's on the inside, you know, where God's word says that man looks on the outside, but God, you know, looks at the heart. You know, thing is, you know, what's your heart condition like? You know, work on that heart condition. You know, if every time, you know, you try to pull somebody down, you try to talk about them, you think they are hater, you think they out to get you. Everybody is not out to get you. Some people are genuinely trying to save you from yourself. Yeah, I think, um, yes, and amen to that. Um, I just think, you know, I think one of the one, one of the vehicles that, you know, like will get us to um a better degree of being inside a community as much, you know, as possible in 2022, um, because everybody's constantly moving. Everybody's here, there, like in everywhere. I think one of the one 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 of the main vehicles that we need to consider is the vehicle called transparency. Mm-hmm. Right? We we have to we. I'm talking about believers now. We have to quit acting as if we. We always been saved. And, and and even the fact that we saved now, right, doesn't mean that we don't have setbacks. Right. right and and right. and we don't have pitfalls. Um, but everybody has to everybody has to proclaim um, um, that that I'm living in perfection. Amen. And it becomes Amen. and it becomes a turnoff to people. Who really need us because they can't relate to us. They're saying, "Hey, man, if you if you perfect, bro, I can't. You ain't you ain't gonna you ain't gonna relate to nothing I got going on because I go to church too. I love God too. Um, but you know, last week somebody was cussing me out so tough, I ended up cussing back. Don't do it. <laughs> and I still came to church the next Sunday because I love God." Amen. And sometimes we have to we have to be transparent to say to people, listen, I have bad days too. I have I have bad moments 
throughout my day. I have good moments. I have highs. I have lows. Um, I'm a human. I love right. God. Um, I'm saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost. But I have some bad days. And it's okay to say that, Dr. Morris. Well, yeah, I mean, we have to get to a point where we learn how to be transparent, you know, but most important, though, we have to learn how to be real to ourselves. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Again, you know, don't entertain, you know, um, when you when you know, you know, you're in that place, you know, or whatever the case may be, you know, but transparency does help, you know, having the ability to be able to go back, you know, and, you know, to acknowledge, you know, when we fall off to let individuals know, you know, uh, we have to go back to the word where it says that, you know, um, you know, by the word of your testimony, you know, it would help save other individuals that, you know, I don't, there's none of us, you know, no one can honestly say that they've always had, you know, or, or kept everything together because we have not, you know, but and we have to remember that we are growing from our lessons, right? Or we should be growing for our, for our lessons. One of the, the things that I was listening to this morning where it says, you know, that we need to make sure, you know, that we don't hold grudges, you know, and that, you know, that we're not, you know, um, you know, um, being judgmental, you know, but when but when life happens, we got to make sure that we're learning from those lessons of life. And when we learn from those lessons of life, we have to use those lessons, you know, to continue to help ourselves, encourage ourselves, you know, but also, you know, to help other individuals as well. And we can't do that, you know, if we're never transparent. We can't do that if we're still always trying to paint a picture, you know, like we always got it together, you know, and we have to get beyond, you know, other individuals, you know, perspectives, you know, and be okay with, you know, when we know that we don't have it all together and when we, if we need to withdraw, you know, we don't have to be sociable, you know, all the time, yeah. you know, and I think a lot of times we're just so busy, you know, just trying to do that, but, you know, we have to get to that point where, you know, until we can't be transparent with other people, you know, unless we learn how to be transparent with ourselves. Yes, and so, you know, I think that, you know, again, one of the biggest things is we have to start surrounding ourselves like with people, um, who are, you know, close to God, you know, who, you know, save folk, um, because um, a lot of times people, people don't have a blueprint. And so we're fighting with people who have a solid group, uh, who have a solid blueprint that is working for them. The problem is it's, it's not Bible, right? Um, you know, kids are, kids are much smarter at the age of five right. to eight. Than I was, you know, I, you know, I have a granddaughter, man. I mean, she can take the phone and go through the phone as if she's a grown adult. I'm thinking like, man, like, but they're so advanced. And if we're, if we're not careful, we're losing the entire generation. You know, when I came up, you know, and it may seem a long time ago, you know, my, my social media was BTU. Baptist Training Union. Now, I don't know if I got no. I don't know if I got nobody on here know anything about BTU. I had to learn the books of the Bible. I had to be able to, you know, I had to memorize them things. That's what we used to say. But I had to memorize them. Um, I had to learn the Beatitudes. You know, it's so many things that I, you know, that was that was that was a lot of my summer. You know, we had vacation Bible school, and you know, in the morning before we got to the afternoon. So. It was a it was a different community. And so I'm able today to better be able uh, to deal with the challenges of life because we all have them. You can how saved and sanctified you are. You you got some challenges. You, right. you may not want to tell nobody, but right. you but you got some. Right. And so, you know, I feel that I'm that I'm better able be because of my foundation. Number one, because God is on my side. That's right. number one. Number right. two, three, four, and five, because I because I had parents who, you know, helped me along the way. I had people inside the community, you know, um, that were a part of the church. And, you know, I had solid foundation. And, and so the mistakes that I made, I'm making mistakes because I didn't know. Right. I'm making, right. I'm making mistakes because I'm making bad choices. I can tell you right. all about me. All the mistakes I've made in my life have been because I made the bad choice to make the mistake. It wasn't because I didn't know. Children today, people today, they're making mistakes and they don't even know that they're mistakes. Right. 
Right. They thinking I'm doing the right thing. I mean, right. Dr. Morris, give us give us some commentary on that. <laughs> Well, I mean, I mean, you're just so right because I mean, it, I mean, you get back to you know, I believe that what we received growing up, you know, and of course, mm-hmm. you know, my denominational background, you know, is different from your denominational background, you know, but similar, yours? still just the same. I grew up, you know, Kojic. I grew up, you know, oh. Church of God in Christ. I grew up Pentecostal. Um, oh, you know, I, don't know. Um, I won't get know. on that. <laughs> It was good you know, though. So I, I feel like that you know our standards were you know I, I hear what you're saying and I'm that sitting here saying weird. that that I'm saying those were light days. You know what I'm saying? I mean we were. I mean I, look, you couldn't even look cross wide, <laughs> cross eyed, you know, or whatever, you know, and 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 they would take you, you know, to town. I'm just, you know, but it just, but we have to get to a point where, you know. The common denominator, though, you know, is what you said. The word is going to be the word. It doesn't mm-hmm. matter, you know, how strict and or how, um, you know, unstrict we may think a denomination was, our teaching was, or whatever the case may be, you know. But I think that we can all be honest where you said, you know, it goes back to the word. It goes back to, I think we can both sit here and honestly say that, you know, a mother's eye across the room was a mother's eye across the room that you knew. You mm. get somewhere, you sit down, you know, you be quiet. Yeah, you know, um, you knew that, That's you know, that. that that you didn't, um, you know, when adults was talking, you know, you didn't just sit down and be quiet. When adults were talking, you left the room. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You know, versus today you know kids sit there adults never say anything they you know the reason why they know so much is because they are exposed um to so much you know that you know that that sheltering you know that we had you know but amy so it just goes back to you know with anybody you know just find those solid you know common denominators you know that ground you know that you that you can rest on together you know and that's where you will find the community you know uh we different but yet what we find is that you know, the intent, you know, of the Lord's word, the intent, you know, of our upbringing, the intent, you know, of the community, those things don't change. And so, you know, when we hold on to those footings is when we can learn how to deal, you know, with the blows of what life sends is when, when we, you know, and I think we can both relate, you know, that, you know, that um, our parents, you know, they taught us, you know, how to um, have a good self image. They taught us, you know, how to, to make sure, you know, that, you know, not in a prior for what the world think the world thinks sometimes, but they they taught us how to have a sense of pride. They taught us how to have a sense yeah. of a work. They taught us how to have you know a good work ethic. They taught us how to take responsibility for our actions. You know, they just ta- I mean it, it was just some stuff that was just instilled in us. You know, and I think that you know today you know we have to begin you know to do a better job. Look for those common things and then begin to share those things because until we as grandparents you know as parents you know until we start showing you know sharing what our parents did and reinforcing those things then we're going to keep on you know seeing you know the quality of relationships deteriorate you know over time wow wow you know i was um you know things you know things have changed you know we're talking about um you know communities um from you know back then and you know like communities now but things have changed it's a it's a whole new world um let me just acknowledge some of these uh jermaine jermond Jermon, like Maynard says, it's not a sin to say we are not okay. That's that's how we heal by admitting. That's the word he uses, admitting that we need help. So I, you know, I used to, I'm I'm so against faking it until you make it. Right, fake it till you, yeah, fake it, <laughs> fake it till you make it. We have some phrases like that, like we've been saying, especially inside church for so long, and they just really. They just they become like contradictory of, of what the word says. Fake it till you make it. No, no. The first Man, step in yeah, the first step in you know change is to admit. Um, right. as Jermon Maynard says, right. you have to admit that there is an issue. Um, right. you know, another one, another one. Um, I was talking to some people to like some church folks the other day, and we were talking about this whole phrase, stay in your lane. Right. And I was like, you, you, you got to, you got to put some context on that. I said, you can't tell somebody to stay in their lane and then also tell them to be my brother's keeper at the same time. Those are, those are two contradictory like statements, right. because if, if, if I stay in my lane and I'm going down the highway and you in your lane and you got a flat tire, should I just pass you by? See, I'm talking about 
community now. Right. Should I should I pass you by and just say, hey, well, you know, I'm I'm gonna stay in my lane, or right. should I, or should I get in your lane? Be, right. Because I because I see that you've become um, um, you're no longer like capable of forward like progression because you got a flat tire. So should I get in your lane and you know help you fix your tire so you can get back going? It's these church cliches have 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 just um got us got us amen let me put some more comments up here linda like paxton easter says i know about btu you got to be old school know about b ain't no more baptist training union going on hey look i was just gonna ask you hey what is that even stand for okay baptist <laughs> training union I, Y'all probably called it because y'all had a lot of Y stuff, YPW in, in the YPWW. Y, yeah, YPWW and stuff like that, which was all great. I love, I love, I love Kojic. You know, my family came up, you know, and um man. Um Isabel says, um, let's see, she says, is our virtual encounters with LHI mentoring and leadership group a community? Hey, Amen. That's that's my group. Come on through, Isabel. Come on through for a brother. Listen, um, um, yes, yes. Our virtual encounters um, that like we have, you know, on here. And even when we uh, meet on Tuesday nights, we have we have we have a small group and we do deep diving. Um, you know, Jesus is about relationship. Right. Amen. And uh, Jesus is about relationship. Jesus is about teaching, teaching the word. You know, let me let me give you. Let me give you some principles, uh, you know, like for better, for better living. So um, to, you know, answer your like question. Yes, Isabel, we um, we do the virtual encounters, LHI like mentoring and leadership group. And we are a small like community. Right. Okay. Um, we're we're you know, we're able to give people the word of God to allow them to think better to allow them to be able to deep dive in the word. And when we say deep dive in the word, what we mean is to go line by line, you know, word by word. And we're trying to get what does the Bible say? Because um, because like the blueprint, like the better living, it's 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 embedded within the Bible. And so we're we're trying to break um, this this really not knowing what the Bible says, because check this out. You can no longer tell people to just go home and pray about it. Amen. It, it's, it's, it's not enough because people will say, I've been praying for the last 10 years and my conditions haven't changed. Right. You know, of course, I talk about Dr. Morris, know where I'm going to go. God's sovereignty works in conjunction with our human responsibility. Right. And, and so our responsibility is to be is to is to we have to understand, you know, like the Holy Spirit teaches, teaches all things. And so we have to allow the Holy Spirit get around other believers, small groups. And so, yes, LHI, we are a small group. Dr. Morris, let me let me, let give me you add something like to that, too. Um, no time, no time. Just, okay. mm -hmm. no time. I'm about I'm about I'm about to give you I'm about to give you an alley oop so you can dump it. <laughs> <laughs> I see you. Yeah, I see you. I'm about to give you an alley oop um, so that you can dunk it. So just talk a little bit about um, um, with. With this blueprint being in the Bible um, and us, you know, being able to deal with people on a biblical, a biblical level of getting right understanding, being able to ask questions, being able to say, I don't understand what you're talking about because um, I know where you were headed. That's why I interrupted you. I know where you're going. But just give us just give us give us some teaching on that. Well, I mean, it just goes back to you know, just anytime you're in an environment, you know, where individuals genuinely care, when you're in an environment, you know, where individuals are pouring on the inside of you, you know, in yeah. where you went in an environment where you feel like, you know, that you're comfortable enough to be yourself and you don't feel like you have to, you know, know everything. You don't have mm. to do everything right. Wow. You know what I'm saying? When you know that you're not being judged, you know, these are the things that we're experiencing, you know, on Tuesday night, you know, and I think we're coming up on almost a year, you know, that we will have been traveling together. And I mean, we learn to laugh together. We 
cry together. You know, we do life mm -hmm. together. You know what I'm saying? I mean, individuals are just genuinely concerned. You know, it's one of those things that, you know, all give so that all can have, you know, that there's no hoarding of information. There's no hoarding of, you know, uh, of tangible goods. There's no hoarding of finances. You know, somebody here a need, you know, automatically pouring into somebody. I mean, that's what a community is. A community is that, you know, um, you know, if you go back to, you know, um, the word of God where, you know, even where it said, you know, they all gave so they all could have, you know, and so, you know, so we get to a point where, you know, it's just open, you know, whatever I have, whatever, you know, Pastor Lambert have, whatever Isabel have, whatever Marlo has, you know, and, you know, other individuals that are normally on this platform as well, the bottom line is we just bring all those resources, you know, the, the but the most important thing is we bring the resource of knowledge and information and revelation, you know, that we have, we have gleaned the word of God for, um, mm -hmm. and we share that information, you know, with one another, because we want to all grow, you know, we're not trying to swell, we're not trying to, you know, behave like, you know, we know anything, when we get on that platform, you know, we take off, you know, um, um, hats, you know, we take off titles, we're all just there, you know, with brothers and sisters in Christ, just trying to learn how to live this life together and grow together, you know, and so, you know, um, I mean, I, it's just, you know, exciting, you know, no competition, you know, no whatever. And, you know, and that's what community mm -hmm. is. Community is that, you know, you're just coming together and we're all recognizing that we we are all at a certain place, you know, and our job is to make sure that we're helping each other get to where they need to be. And the thing about it is I may have grown in one area. But somebody else has grown in another area. So I can't think that I'm bigger or I'm better than them or I know, you know, more than them. I mean, it's just even keel, you know, just sharing. And I mean, and that's just the awesomeness, you know, of, yeah. you know, being in a community, you know, of um, real Bible believing, you know, faith standing, you know, individuals, you know, that whatever anyone have, you know, here it is, you know, wow. and not even that's really expecting anything in return. Wow. And that's good. And you and you and you got to have people, you know, me, me and Dr. Morris, we get on here and um, you 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 all see the good conversations. But we but we're able to hold each other accountable. Like, are you are you there? Are you, are you sure that was them? Like, are you are you sure that wasn't you? You know, but but we we're, we're OK because we know that we're trying to help each other be better people, Dr. Moore, people will be surprised about the conversations that we have concerning holding each other accountable right. to what the right. Bible says. Like, are, are you, are you in yourself? Are you in your flesh? Because okay. that, that ain't right. You know, you telling me what they did, but what did, but what did you do, Lambert? What did you, what'd you do? What'd you say? And I'm like, ah, man, I, you, right. you know, why you got, why, why you got to ask me that? Right. You know? And then those moments, you know, where, you mm -hmm. know, maybe in that particular second, I wasn't ready to hear it. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And you already know I wasn't ready to hear it and I wasn't receiving it. But, you know, I go back and I, you know, have to start thinking about, it. well, I know he really just had my best interest in mind. You know, maybe I need to think about, you know, um, what he said and give some serious, you know, thought to that, you know, and being able to come back and say, you know, hey, I wasn't in the right frame of mind. You know, we were talking about it, you know, but what you said, you know, was really right. You know, I appreciate you, you know, for, you know, um, you know, really caring about, you know, me and my relationship, you know, with other individual so much that you make me assess you know a situation and to see what part you know that I'm playing in it you know wow. I mean that that is just you know genuine community you know mm. looking out you know for one another you know so that we don't get lost and we don't end up walking away from you know the oh, very yes. people that are really just trying you know to hurt us you know but the other part of it is taking the time you know where where, where you were going and what you were saying earlier is taking the time, you know, to begin to let the walls down, you know, and truly let people in, you know, and realize that, you know, that they're not there, you know, to harm mm. you. And sometimes, unfortunately, it won't feel good, right? No, it doesn't feel good. You know, but but it's good for you. I mean, but it's the same thing as what happens in the word of God. You know, a lot of the decisions that God make, a lot of things that he allow, you know, they don't feel good and we don't like it, you know, but he's doing those things and he's allowing those things, you know, for our good so that we can grow. Uh, yeah. You know, um, one thing, well, let me, let me read this Jamon Maynard, man. Thank you, brother. He's putting a lot of powerful wisdom in, and, you know, we just glean from everybody. He says, once we have a full understanding that a Superman and Wonder Woman 
our fictional characters, we realize we can't do what they have done on the TV screen. We are human and we are not characters. Yeah. This is this is this is what he's saying. I know, yeah, we're 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 not characters as as much as I love God, I still got I still got tear ducts that cry. I, I still I still you know I you know I still have feelings that that can be hurt and and that can be uh, like stepped on. So you know you got all of those things. Um, so this what this this what I'm tell folk right here, and then we're gonna get off of here. Don't get lost in the sauce. Don't get lost. I know. I just I know. I just took you for a whole nother. Uh, I took you for a whole nother. You saying what? Don't get what? He just went to the left. Let me uh, let me let me get it back up there. Cause I didn't have my G capitalized. Don't get lost in the sauce. The sauce is is just this big gumbo of just a mixture of everything. Don't don't get in that gumbo bowl, right? right. Um, um, right. You know my you know my mom used to tell me, hey, listen, don't eat. Don't you eat everybody's meatloaf? Right. And don't you eat everybody gumbo? You don't know. You don't know <laughs> what you eat. Right. And she right. she said you she she said you'll come out barking like a dog when I ask you a question. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So so you can't get lost in what the word. You need something that's going to be sustainable, mm -hmm. something that's going to be solid. Um, um, that's gonna that 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 that's gonna be able to guide you a blueprint. That's going right. to be able to guide you to better living. Listen, right. you all, um, we've had a great conversation tonight. I'm going to let Dr. Morris have like the final word. Let me read a few more of these. Um, Sister Isabel says, I have had to unlearn some things since being a part. Ooh, Sister, Sister Isabel, you, I did not pay her to say this. She, she, this is just how she feels. She says, I have, I have had to unlearn some things since being a part of the LHI mentoring and leadership group, but I am better because of it. And let me just say this, um, Sister Isabel is is just, and I'm not saying this because she's on here. Um, I've learned a lot from her. Um, you know, she 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 has a gift, and sometimes if people are never allowed to be able to speak on what they believe, or you know, this and that, they'll just be smothered. And that's why these right. small groups are so important. Um, Sister Ismail, uh, very, very smart when it comes to the word of God. She, she she asks the critical, like, she asks the questions. You just can't go to Sister Isabel talking about what God said. She's going to be like, well, wait a minute. If he said this over here and he said right. that over there, that don't right. make sense. And right. she, she, she asks the best, the best questions. And I'm saying, Sister Isabel, like, you you have a gift, right? Mm -hmm. And so I see her gift. I, I'm, I'm, I'm just really, in, you know, really encouraged when she's on that call with us on Tuesday right. night. Um, you all can look on my page for that Tuesday night class. We do it every Tuesday night at six. It's really one hour. Like we're on there at six to seven and we're deep diving. Right now we're deep diving John 316. We're just getting all the components. Um, Tomorrow night, we're going to be talking about the aspect of like the Pharisees because Nicodemus, right. he was a Pharisee. And if you don't know, I read this in a book. If you don't know the history of the Pharisees, mm -hmm. you really can't get the uh, the like complete context of Jesus' earthly ministry if you don't know who the Pharisees were. They made his life miserable. And if you don't, if you don't know, if you don't know that about them, you're not going to fully understand what Jesus had to go through while he was on earth. Would, it, would that be correct, Dr. Morris? That is most definitely correct. Because <laughs> right, I'm, I'm going to tell you this. It, it's, some, it's some real life Pharisee spirits still living today that are putting obstacles in the way of the saints. Um. Before I let Dr. Morris have this final word, um, let me just say this, you all. Um, we have to we have to get this community back. Um, you know, a lot of people say, well, you know, virtual this. But I'm going to tell you what, when we was in a pandemic, I ain't hear nobody talking about we all not be on virtual. Everybody 
<laughs> when it was on virtual, right? Everybody was there. And so um, do we need to still attend? And I'm gonna, I'm gonna say this very lightly. <laughs> Isabel, I can hear it. drop off. They finna drop off. <laughs> like, you better not say it. You better not say it. Um, um, let me just say it like this. Um, get yourself around some believers where you can um, learn and where you can hold them accountable. They can hold you accountable. And there's transparent conversation. Like Dr. Moore said, you can you can cry with them. You can you can laugh with them. You can. You can sit on mountain highs with them. You can be able to, you know, hold their hand and go through valley lows with them. Amen. Sister uh, Marlo says, um, agree with Sister Isabel. The Bible study challenges um, you inside of a good way. She says, and Mother Lambert, amen. You're going to make me shed a tear. We <laughs> could, we call my mother's name. My God, I'm serious. I, I, well, I, I'll, I'll, I'll get to shedding tear. Um, this past weekend, me and my family, we we um, still just celebrating the life of our mother. So, uh, went on to glory in 2017 on this past weekend. And um, Sister Marlo was, um, she was favored to be up on some of her teaching back in Long Beach, California from the LBC at my dad's church at Morningstar. She says, and Mother Lambert was right about gumbo and meat. And meatloaf, she said, and add spaghetti to that list too. <laughs> Can't eat everybody's Can't spaghetti. Can't eat everybody's spaghetti. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Look, and, and be wary of the meatballs. You don't know what. what you, don't know, you don't know what's going on. <laughs> Isabel says, "Am I am I going to have to move to Arkansas? Come on down." And and, and, and that what the guy used to say on like the Price is Right. Uh, mm. Come on down. Yeah, you may have to come on out here. Um, Jermon Maynard says, "I'll say it. We." Definitely still need to attend in-person service. Virtual is a good backup. Jermon, I'm, I'm, I'm not even going to let them loose on you right now. <laughs> I'm not going to let them. Because I'm going to tell you what, 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 what like our Bible study has like produced. It has produced people who interrogate scripture. And I understand what Jermon Maynard is, is you know, saying. I go to church every Sunday. I go to Second okay. Baptist. Amen. Um, this Sunday, we're going to be in service. Um, our newly elected pastor, Dr. Maurice Watson, he's going to be he's going to be preaching an amazing sermon. Um, so, yeah, I you know, I support in um, in person like worship at the local visible representative of the body of Christ. I support that 100 percent. I also support um, small groups. I support them all. You know, everybody, you know, some people have, you know, some people have had church hurt. They don't want to go to the building. Do we just leave those people? Um, some people say, hey, I'm at church, but I can never ask a question. You know, I'll be having stuff I want to ask. I've been reading the Bible and they ask Jesus stuff all the time. That's why he told the parable. And so Jesus, I do know this, that at the end of the day, the gospel would have been spread to everybody. Amen. Amen. Our job, somebody said, would like Jesus have been on Facebook? I believe, yes, he would have. I believe Jesus would have been on like Twitter. I believe Jesus would have Jesus would have been on TikTok. I believe that everywhere the devil pop up, Jesus says, I'm popping up too. Every time you got something negative to say, I got something positive to say. That's just what right. I believe. And you call me right. wrong. So I believe there is enough, there's enough work out there in every aspect for us to go spread the word of God. Right. That being said, well, we're not going to hold you long. Amen. Marlo gives the heart. Sister Isabel says, thank you for not leaving us. I ain't going nowhere. <laughs> Dr. Morris, give us a final thought and then I'll get us out of here. Um, let's just all remember that change is uncomfortable. I mean, you said a mouthful when you said, you know, you believe Jesus would have you know, um, been involved in all the different platforms that we have today. So the bottom line is we have to remember that, you know, back in that day, they didn't have cars, right? 
um, you know, so the vehicle, you know, in which um, the gospel was carried, you know, from one place to another changed. And so we have to remember that while we have had cars for years, you mm. know, now we have, you know, virtual platforms so that, you know, the message can begin, you know, to travel at the speed of light, you know, but we have to continue to do the same thing where Jesus said, you know, for us to make sure that we're teaching what he taught. And wow. so, you know, when, we, when we're on the virtual platforms and things like that, you know, um, just like when individuals would get in their cars, you know, and go witness, just like back in the day when they went for foot and it took them days, you know, to get to where they needed to be. You know, we just have to make sure that when we show up to do what we're doing, no matter what the platform is, that we are sharing the unadulterated um, word of God in its purity, you know, so that it can accomplish, you know, what it was sent to accomplish. Wow. Well, amen. And and I say amen to that. And I'll give you one last like sentence. Don't knock anybody who is out spreading the gospel. Because the gospel needs to be spread everywhere. Don't knock folk out spreading the gospel. We have we we a lot of times at church we we deal with in reach and that's good, but there is something called outreach out. and and a lot of churches, you know, like deal with it and they do a great job. But there are people we have opportunities on our job inside the grocery store. There are several opportunities. Y'all listen, we one team. We one unified team. And our job is to get the word out about Jesus Christ. So don't knock folk for getting the word out. Maybe a little like different than you're used to doing or that's 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 not comfortable for you, we just care that they're getting the word out because we're one right. body of Christ. We're not we're not a bunch of churches like Crips and Bloods fighting for like turf. This is not a turf right. war. Now, I know right. I've got to get off of here because I'll go into this. This is not a turf war. This ain't my corner and that's your corner. We're one body of Christ. And our job corporately is to spread the gospel. Right. Death, the burial and the resurrection, Amen. Uh, the ascension, the Holy Spirit descending, right. Jesus is coming right. back to live with us, right? You know, we 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 got to talk about that, Amen. and how, Amen. and so you know how we do that on the different platforms, whether it's in person, virtual. Uh, just make sure that you're getting some truth, right? right. Uh, right. Jermon, let me and let me say this on here because he wants to because and. I'm going to say this. I wasn't putting Jermon Maynard on the spot because I, I agree with what he's saying. It wasn't uh, I agree with my brother. Um, right. And he's saying you are you you are absolutely like correct. Never knock anyone spreading God's word. And Jermon Maynard was not knocking anybody. He wasn't doing Amen. that because I'm, I'm, I, I am very sensitive about relationships. He was not knocking that. He was just making a statement that people need to go to church. And Jermon, right. I'm going to tell you, to, I'm going to agree with you. Y'all need to go to church. <laughs> <laughs> you need to go to church. You need to go to church. Find you somewhere to go to church. For those who 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 go, I go on Sunday mornings, but I also have a also have a small group because everything ain't for everybody. But what is for everybody is the gospel, right? right. And we're gonna keep we're gonna keep spreading that. Amen. Um, Doctor Moore, can you lead us out in prayer? And we're gonna consider that our benediction for like tonight. Listen. Thank you all for getting on. We'll be back on next week. Thank you all. Love y'all with the love of Christ. Amen. And God be the glory. Dr. Morris. Amen. Heavenly Father, we just thank you, Lord, for every word, Father, that was said on tonight, Father, Lord Jesus, that allows us to know that sometimes change is uncomfortable, Lord. We thank That's you, right. Lord, for the revelation, Father, Lord Jesus, that we need to take a look in the mirror, Father, and begin to look at ourselves, O oh Lord, that we need to begin to understand, O oh Lord Jesus, that we have to learn, O oh Lord, to be our own worst critic, Father, but being that own worst critic, Father, Lord, is not to pull ourselves down, Father, but to build, our, build ourselves up, Lord. Lord, teach us not to neglect ourselves, O oh Lord Jesus, but to start spending time, O oh Lord, in your presence. Father, in your word, O oh Lord Jesus. Lord, teach us, O oh Lord, and guide us, Lord, to a community, Father, Lord Jesus, of other believers, O oh Lord Jesus, that are resting in your word, Father, Lord, and standing on the truth, O oh Lord. We pray, Father, that we no longer waste time and energy, Father, Lord, on things, Lord, that we don't care about, Father, Lord. Lord, allow us, Lord, to fulfill our heart's desire, Father, Lord Jesus, and that is to seek you first in all your righteous, Lord, knowing that everything else will be added, Father, Lord. Lord, we just thank you, Father, on tonight, Father, for just allowing us to take a look in the mirror, Father, Lord, and take a look at ourselves, Oh Lord, to see what you see, Father Lord, instead of just what we see. In Jesus' name, we pray these in all things. Amen. 
Amen. Y'all, I'm about to put something up before we go. Um, I usually go over this with Dr. Morris, but I'm just going to I'm just going to put it on here and she'll be OK with it. This is what we're going to talk about next week. <laughs> this is what we're going to talk about next week, next Monday. We, I'm going to make a banner. I'm going to put a put a banner up um, and uh, I want I want y'all to um, invite somebody on next week, next next Monday. This is what we're going to talk about creating me. This ain't about our neighbors. Creating me a clean heart and renew a right spirit in me, Amen. right? Me and right. And so we're gonna be we're gonna be doing some self awareness next week. This ain't talking about nobody. This is we're gonna be dealing with us next week. We're gonna we're gonna have some practical ways that all this uh, you know transpires inside the context of this particular like you know um, uh, like scripture, and then you know from like a metaphorical standpoint. You know how we can make this apply to us. We ain't gonna look at our neighbors creating me a clean right. heart because sometimes my heart then got a little dirty mm. and renew a right spirit because sometimes I got the wrong spirit Amen. that it, I ain't talking about doctor, I'm talking about me, Lambert. Sometimes there's a wrong spirit operating in me. Mm. And so next Monday, we ain't gonna do class. Amen. Let me let me let me let me say this right here to to, to this. To this man of God on here, I love him. Kevin Lambert, amen. Just a powerful man of God, powerful family. Um, yeah, we got the same last name, but this guy right here, man, I, um, I, every chance I get to talk to him, people, and I'm going to say this um, for anybody that comes on here after this, any family, this, this guy, every time I talk to him, he pushes me. And I haven't talked to him in a while, but he pushes my biblical intelligence. Right. He says little things that it's like, OK, that do make sense. OK, he do got a point. And so and he's a lot younger than me. Right. And so that but what I'm saying that for is that's why you got to put yourself around people who love God and who study the word. Um, Elder Kevin Lambert, God bless you, man of God. Thank you for being on. He's talking about some rev. Thank you for being on. Hey, y'all be good. Next week, you all have somebody on here. I'm giving you all the subject already of what we're going to talk about. Creating me a clean heart and renew a right spirit in me. It's not my mother. It's not my father. But it's me, oh Lord, standing in the need of a blessing. Amen. Y'all be good. God bless you.